Who has a gun? I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. Like a, a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have Corrupt. sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. <laughs> Hi there, my name is uh, Ibrahim Oosthuizen. I'm from Lansdowne, Cape Town, South Africa. My name is Benjamin. Uh, my surname is Blom. I'm from Kaili Chai in Cape Town. Hi, I'm Chantal. I'm originally from Pretoria, but I'm studying in Cape Town. Hi, I'm Simeon and I'm from Takai in Cape Town. Kolani Gobeni, as from home. I'm Pomalanga and uh, I'm residing in the most, most famous Kailicha. I am Zizi Pontlana, originally from the Eastern Cape. I live in Cape Town and I work at the Cape Un Peninsula University of Technology. We're having a conversation um, just uh, recently with some of our colleagues and we were looking at this uh, vet and this text thing and it's a headache because especially that the vast majority of the whole thing is based on the mismanagement of money by our government, okay? Now, if you go into our communities, especially if you go to, to the Cape Flats, for example, what do you find there? You find high level of crimes, drugs, you know, gang-related crimes and all the kind of stuff. Those should be getting high priority attention. I mean, it's not something that just started yesterday. I mean, there should have been so many interventions in place that are actually producing results. Because at the end of the day, the people that are most affected by the VED, it's us, the people that are actually making an honest living, the people that are pushing drugs, nothing. Look now, what's happening in Cape Town now? Taxi violence. Who calls the shots there? Who's being taxed in those taxes and all that kind of stuff? Who's actually now? Let's not let's 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 forget about the bread that you would buy from 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 the supermarket, but the overall picture the of it. Exactly. As well. Who's the innocent bystanders? It's important. Who's the innocent? So, so we say we're sitting here with a need whereby we need to make money for the economy to run and for us to actually for as a country to actually be able to accumulate money, but then. We are making it at what cost? Because we, the people that are actually putting in the money, are the ones that are being neglected. So it becomes a question of what should we do and how should we do it? Because if we keep on saying increase word, increase word, and then it should, there's nothing to show for it, then what is, the, what is, the, what is the, the other solution? What else can we do? I think it's, it's about time that we come up with new ideas and strategies. But also it's a symptom of the, the uh, massive unemployment you have here. So we have a small tax base of people. I mean, like, you know, there's not a lot of people who are Get taxed. Who working and, and putting back tax into the fiscus. And, and you have this situation where the easiest way for the government to solve a problem is just hit everybody with VAT. And what they should be doing is creating jobs. You know, escalating education. I mean, if you some other countries, certainly in Africa, they've been really aggressive about improving the employment situation. And I think that's a much more proactive, positive way of dealing with this, rather than penalising everybody. If if you were to take it on the business aspect, remember, as a country, we've got exports and imports and stuff like that, which I still believe the VAT also has a huge, huge impact. If I were from another country or a foreign country, having to import something into the country, knowingly now, what I'm used to being taxed, now I'm going to be taxed more. That also has a huge, huge impact on what my product is going to be and what my product I'm going to sell to the country. Now, knowing that I'm going to be taxed more, I'm going to have to charge them more. Now, will they afford the more that I'm charging them for that one item of, of the product that I'm busy selling them? So again, also that, I still feel it has a, a, an impact when it comes to the employment rate. Now, I'm, I'm a company in this country having to buy something out of another, I'll make a typical example. Um, okay, I'm a VW fan. Now, usually most of the VWs were pro produced in, in, in Australia, then come here just to be assembled. Now, fortunately, one of them, the new ones, will be done in eight, eight, eight and a half. As a result, they managed to drop it down. So that's, that's typically the example I'm trying to make. If it were to come from outside and being imported into the country, that person is going to give us into it with a higher price, knowingly we're charging him very high vet and stuff like that. So that's where also it has an impact. If I'm in the company and I'm taking this thing now at a higher price, there's an 
effect on, on the on amount of people that I have to employ because now I have this amount of budget, then I have to squeeze it in so that I can have that product, but then Unfortunately, the very people that work with this has to suffer. That's why you now you, you, you get people now having losing jobs and stuff like that in, in these industries and stuff. So I think also it also had a huge, huge impact when it got to that and with the employment rate and stuff like that. There's certain things that you don't get taught in a school, for example, like your bonds and your uh, electricity and how it's going to increase and your cost of life. And these things weren't, these things weren't taught to uh, unless uh, you get to that point and now you find out for yourself, you, you know what I mean? And uh, probably people my age would understand. And then I feel like it's uh, also our duty to educate ourselves in this way and parents as well and everybody else that has this information, educate from a younger age even, uh, yes it's gonna be scary, but I, th I feel like we'd maybe be more likely or more prepared for what's to come. And I mean, we live in a new, uh, in a new kind of uh, era where everything's quick, fast. We come up with good ideas. There's innovation. There's all these things. How can we still be stuck in a, the same mm. place that we are for the past 20 odd years? Not, not saying uh, with the, with the um, racial issues and the, this, the, that, all the other things on the side. I'm talking about unemployment still. Still, is that still is, is that still the same? Is going to be the same issue? Is, are, are we still going to have the okay? Our education system. Then we're going to change it to this. Then we want to change it to caps. Then you want to ask students coming from high school are they prepared for university? And then first year we have so many dropouts. And then the same things. If you look at the industry at uh, at the tertiary level, they'll tell you 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 hear a lot of things. Oh, the highest depression rate, the highest suicide rate. Mm -hmm. Still, if we know this. Why is it still happening? I'm just a bit touched by the fact that um, this 20 odd years ago um, wasn't even, I don't think we had the same problems we do now, not because we're evolving or anything, but because literally back then everybody had a job. Do you understand? So it wasn't a matter of um, being without more it is more than it is now because now the unemployment rate is really high and that's just what we're dealing with now but in terms of time this is fairly new to us do you understand what i mean so we can't like you said you don't really when you grow you don't know how the next level of your life is going to be do you understand so we're just as a nation new to this for me because back then our parents would even tell us on campfires and stories about how it was racial and brutal yes but everybody had a job do you understand so it's i don't think it's comparable as yet maybe we'll compare our now selves to our future selves we'll complain about this later i think it's just a too soon we've seen nations fall and we've seen them rebuild themselves, yeah. right? This has happened from the start of time to today. And there will always be that suitable way of doing things for a country. And I mean, even if I look in modern time, there are some good examples today. I don't understand why we can't adopt certain, mm. certain things. Mm. It's like we just, uh, it's like because it's benefiting certain individuals, they can't allow certain things to change because then they're affected. I mean, in business even now, we, we, yeah, at the sports management, we learn about efficiency and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Efficiency and effectiveness, those two things, you get pushed efficiency and effectiveness. Yeah. In business, you get pushed that. But efficiency, yes, the job is getting done by a machine. Effectiveness, the same thing. So why? We don't actually care if this person's unemployed. We're getting our product out. I'm making money. The business is flourishing. Whoa, whoa. Mm. things are being done. Yeah. Do you get me? They, we, we lose that, that human kind of element yeah. that is attached to everything where, you know, sometimes you need to make a decision. Like uh, it's, it's, it's uh, something I ask myself even when I need to allocate money towards someone else, right? The first question I ask myself is, would I be happy receiving that? Because if I'm not happy receiving that, I would never ever give that to someone else. I would never ever give that to someone else.
to someone else. No, that, and that's just me. That's straightforward. And I don't care about where we're allocating and workload and all of that stuff. If I know what that person has done, obviously, this is where also your knowledge and your experience comes into play. I mean, I don't want to talk bad about the government or anything like that, but you, you should be a just government, right? And with a just government, you know how knowledgeable you are about certain things. You cannot put a, a sports manager, for example, in a doctor's position. Yeah. It does not work. You cannot do that. Yes, it's my friend, or yes, yeah. it's this, but it does not work. You need something or someone that and for that, yeah. yeah. Just you get to what touch I mean? on what you're saying, I mean, within the walls of our classrooms and our lecture rooms, we learn about transformation. Well, in, in, for example, I'm a sports student, so in class it teaches about transformation, is that um, black people were previously disadvantaged and now they are given better or more opportunities to play sports on um, national levels. Uh, there's probably transformation in different contexts as well, but in a business context, the government has been chilling with the same people, I don't know since when, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's bizarre, I mean really. Even the shuffling, it's the same yeah. shuffle of the same people, do you understand yeah, what I yeah. mean? So why can't we implement transformation? In, in a country is just like a business, right? We're running a business here, and these are the people on the managerial side, I'd say those are the governments, mm -hmm. and we're just the the employees and they're just having their fun time up there without <laughs> transformation happening i mean we have we can't even as as young people i'm just going to make this about us for a few minutes seconds we are not represented well enough because probably the youngest guy in parliament is especially you know what I mean? We're not represented enough. So if now they can't even transform as a, as a government, I'd, I don't know. Where, where are these um, innovative ideas going to come from? You know, it's the same minds doing the same things every day. They aren't new people coming in or new people coming out. Where is the change going to come from? I just say, out to the old, in with the new. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, a bit of both, uh, yeah, fresh both ideas. Yeah, and... just really work. You're making me feel bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please don't. Like, I'd be an right now. <laughs> My dream is for people to be um, less selfish in this world. My dream is to be a successful entrepreneur and a humanitarian. I think for a young man that grew up in Kaidic, I want to eradicate poverty. And for me to do that, I need to create opportunities um, in, in society. and. I also understand that people have a lot of trauma, they carry a lot of systematic trauma in them, and it's my duty as a humanitarian to try and make a difference in society. I think there's a very vital need for that. My dream <laughs> is just to be financially free. So my dream is, or was, and could be to climb Everest, because you go and see amazing places and do amazing things. Uh, but to do that, you need to be enabled. And because I'm an educator, I understand, I think, the importance of enabling people but we need to enable people in the new te technological era which we're moving into because that's the world you're living in. And by doing that, we can empower people to go forwards. You can't put the empowerment before the enabling. We've got to enable people with the skills, the knowledge and the abilities and confidence so that they can become empowered. My dream is to do away with the system or the style of education we're being educated. My dream is for the nation to do away with the lie or the BS of the Rainbow Nation. That's just nonsense. Yazi, you should ever sit and talk with people, or else take a walk and create a straight talk. Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger. Listen what is right and say what is wrong. You should ever sit and talk with people, or else take a walk and create a straight talk. Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger. Listen what is right and say what is wrong.